He's hoping to become the next Lewis Hamilton or Jensen Button. Cheshire racing driver Oliver Webb's in pole position to break into Formula One following a season in the United States. BBC Six Music's Chris Hawkins has been catching up with the 21-year-old and discovering why he's been tipped for the top. I had to put him close to a driver who we've had it before, maybe Jensen Button. Well, I need to win in this car, crossing the line first, every race. That would be ideal. Winning this championship would then definitely get F1s on my radar. After spending a year racing in America on the IndyCar circuit, Ollie has just signed for a new team back in the UK, where he's hoping to break into Formula One. And this is what drew him back from America, the Fortec World Series car. In six weeks time, Ollie will sit behind this wheel here on the starting grid at Monza for the first race of the season. Fortec are confident that he'll be in pole position and they've got every reason to be. Ollie got hooked on racing at a very early age. It all started actually when I was about nine years old. Uh, actually it's a go-karting party that my friends went to and uh, caught the bug from there really. It just really made me want to carry on with the karting and, and take it to another level but not really professionally. I was thinking about it at that time more just as a hobby. His big break came when he got a place on the Formula BMW scholarship programme when he was just 15. At that point it, you must have felt like I've made it. It, it, it's hard, there's always a level above and there's always someone doing better so it, it, it's one of the positives and negatives of the sport is it constantly pushes you from every, every single side. I've come to the headquarters of Fortec Motorsport to find out why they've chosen Ollie to drive for the team this season. Incredible determination, very strong mentally and, and really wants it really badly and, and some years you have drivers who, who say they want it but Deep down, the, 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 they don't really want it enough. So Ollie's got what it takes to be a winner, but what about the car? Okay, so look, there's a slight difference, let's say, in our build. My, our, our weight distribution is, is ever so slightly different. Uh, you can hop in there very easily. Yeah, fairly easily, yeah. It wouldn't yeah. be so easy for me, would it? Well, it just depends. We all get seats that are moulded to no, our body. You're being very kind. <laughs> it would be quite difficult for me just to jump in in the way that you do. Just to jump in, yeah. OK, because once you're in, obviously, it's not like driving a normal car, is it? You're lying virtually flat on your back. Pretty almost. much flat on your back, yeah. Your feet are higher than your bum actually is, and they go all the way to the front of the tub here. The pedals are about here in the car. Okay, so you do through. use the pedals or do you use paddles? You use pedals for obviously to stop and go and then here on the wheel we have all sorts of different buttons, paddles that you have on the back as a Formula One car would have. Uh, all sorts of different launch control buttons, fuel settings, clutch and paddles that go on the back and all these get used by the driver while they're in the car racing. But with speed comes risk and he knows all too well about the dangers. In 2009, his teammate and friend, Henry Surtees, was killed in an accident at Brands Hatch. And Ollie had only been in America for a matter of weeks when another British driver, Dan Weldon, was involved in a fatal crash. He was over there in Vegas in my first ever oval race. A couple of hours later, obviously, the, the passing of Dan Weldon uh, occurred, and that being a UK driver coming over to the States, doing what we'd all aspired to do, and then passing, doing that is, is really hard for myself and the family. But from your own personal point of view, Ollie, the, the thrill clearly outweighs the danger, but you must be aware of what can go wrong. I think there's a certain amount of respect when you're driving a machine such as this and the speeds that we're doing in, in such close environments, 200 mile an hour, 190 mile an hour, side by side with another car. Um, the tracks are very safe these days and um, the, the circuits do everything they can to improve that and Renault and the championships do everything they can improve to, to the cars and I've been in some pretty big crashes and uh, pretty high speeds and, and got away kind of unscathed. With just weeks before the start of the new season, Ollie's putting a lot of time in at the gym, but this is no ordinary workout. So why do you need to be so physically fit? 
Uh, to withstand the G-forces is, is a big issue. Uh, as the guys go up the series, you know, from junior series up to you know, possibly F1, then the G-forces get stronger, the speeds get faster. Uh, the heat in the cars are, is a big concern as well. So the fitter the guys are, the more they can deal with those constraints in the car. You do look like you're in incredible shape. Is this the peak of your physical fitness? I'd say so at the moment. The winter is always great for, uh, for training because we uh, not only can we afford to maybe have a l more time for injury because we're not in the car, um, we've got five months out of the car to really go heavy and we can afford to wake up feeling a little bit sore. Can we see these muscles? No. <laughs> let's, let's have a little look. No, that's not happening. <laughs> Just the... And when he's not in the gym or behind the wheel of a racing car, Ollie's test driving for BAC, a sports car manufacturer in Cheshire. Ollie was on our radar from about two or three years ago as a, as a major motorsport fan. He's very liked uh, within the team, he gets on incredibly well with everybody, of course. It puts a spring in everyone's step, the fact that he's involved in motorsport and, and for some of the younger guys particularly, they, they do tend to look up to him in that respect. Ollie has his sights set on breaking into Formula One, but if he's going to make it, he knows it requires more than just driving ability. Modern day racing driver has got to be businessman, marketing tool and doing the results on the track because without the results you won't get looked at by the team, but without the cash behind you and the sponsorship they'll try and find someone else. Does it mean though that you can buy your way to the top? No, no it doesn't. You've pretty much, you've got to be coming first for them to then look at you, and then once they've looked at you, then they'll look at your bank statements. With the first race of the season at Monza just six weeks away, Ollie's come to the headquarters of Formula One team Red Bull to practice on their simulator. Why don't they just go out on a circuit? Why don't they just go out and race and practice out on a track? Well, it's very expensive to actually go and run a, car, a race car at a circuit. You have to hire the circuit, you have to take the whole team out there. But also there's lots of things you can't control, that if you turn up at the circuit and it's very cold temperatures or it's raining, you're not going to get much use from it. Whereas in the simulator, it never rains on the track. OK, Pedro Oli, so your fastest lap was a 135.8 that you did on that final lap. Are you anywhere near as focused in a simulator as you are for real? I'd say it's kind of kudos towards the simulator really because the better the simulator is the more focused and the easier it is to think you're actually doing it for real and I think when when you do it enough and, and you come here enough and, and the simulator is as good as it is then yeah you just you just act like you're actually there. In a few weeks time Ollie will be racing at Monza for real but does he have what it takes to make it to Formula One? He's right up there he there is if he if he has the right the right team around him and he approached it in the right way and a bit of luck, he can, he can run at the front with all the best. You need pretty much everything these days because there's so many people fighting for 22 seats on that F1 grid and unless you've got everything, and I mean everything, then you don't really get there. How much do you want it? Um, everyone will say more than anyone but I'll be even more than them. <laughs>